Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your night's going great. Sorry about the super late upload. We were supposed to have the gods interview out earlier, but I ran into some major technical difficulties. That video will be out in the morning tomorrow, but tonight we're still going to make one. I'm going to go through this because, oh, we have so much to talk about guys. I'm not even going to bore you with an intro. Subscribe if you want to stay updated on Overwatch League daily, boys. And now let's jump straight into it. So starting off, we have this London Spitfire and Boston Uprising lawsuit situation because of Funny Astro. So if you guys follow on my channel daily you know I made a video two days ago covering funny Astro getting terminated from the Boston Uprising and at the time I didn't really want to expose or leak the reason why he was terminated because well he was going through a hard time I talked to him a little bit in DMs and I felt bad for him so I thought I would just cover how he was terminated well that's pretty much out of the window now because Nicole Carpenter made an absolutely huge article covering this entire situation the London Spitfire versus the Boston Uprising and the reason why he was terminated was for boosting he got caught by the Boston Uprising and Huck was like no not a chance we don't want you on this team <laughs> which for good reasons Boston Uprising went through a lot of drama during season one dream Casper and then obviously internal issues so I could see why he wouldn't want to deal with anything like this just straight drama free going into season two so it makes sense why he wouldn't want him on the roster and you're probably wondering well where does London Spitfire come in on this whole thing so funny Astro used to play for the London Spitfire's contenders team so London Spitfire, their academy team is British Hurricane. As we know, that's where Funny Astro used to play. And he was signed over to the Boston Uprising alongside his former teammate Fusions. And everything was going great, right? But then Boston Uprising found out that he was boosting. And they just immediately terminated his contract. And then London Spitfire now are sitting here like, wait, wait a second. You can't terminate him because we still need to get paid. And you're probably confused. Why does London Spitfire want to get paid for Boston Uprising signing a player? So I'll explain real quick to all of you guys how the process works when a contenders player gets signed to an overwatch league team so say i'm a contenders player for the british hurricane i do really well and then boston uprising are like hey we want to sign your player then i will negotiate with the boston uprising what i want my salary to be let's say i agree with boston uprising for seventy thousand dollars boston uprising is going to have to give me my seventy thousand dollars salary for that season then they're also going to have to pay a fee to the contenders team that i was playing for and this is considered a bonus to that contenders team for getting a player into the Overwatch League. So let's say a funny Astro signed with the Boston Uprising for around $70,000. Well, then Boston Uprising would owe the London Spitfires Academy team, British Hurricane, somewhere around $70,000. And that's where this whole entire drama starts because, well, funny Astro was terminated and now London Spitfire, they're like, hey, we still want our 50K. We don't care, you know, you signed him, you took him, the contract was done, so you owe us money, you took our player. And of course, Boston Uprising being the cheap team that they are, we all know they love to save money, that's why they're signing Brazilians, they're signing Australian players, none taken away from the South American and Australian players, sure, they have some really good talent out there, and I'm not saying they're not Overwatch League ready, but obviously, just like all the other Overwatch League teams are going for Koreans, they're going for Europeans, you know, proven players. Well, Boston Uprising, they're kind of taking it slow, picking up the pieces from weird regions, signing players that nobody's ever heard of and yeah it worked out for them in season one I'm not gonna knock them for it it was smart it paid off at the end of the day well they're going for it again and in my opinion I kind of think it's you know a cheap route it might be smart it might be efficient hey good for them but it is still cheap you can't deny that and definitely the fact that they did sign over funny Astro from the London Spitfire and then terminated him and now they don't want to pay the London Spitfire it's not the London Spitfire's fault that funny Astro was boosting now if London Spitfire get caught knowing that he was a booster and they didn't do anything about it then I can see why they're upset but there's no report on that I haven't heard that that is the case either so I do not think so I just think that Boston Uprising terminated him and now they don't want to pay the money because he's not going to be playing for them and they don't think it should be their right to pay and real quick on that note i think it's absolutely hilarious to bring up the fact that boston uprising had a player last season during the playoffs nako who admitted to boosting and selling accounts on twitter literally during the season boston uprising did absolutely nothing to nako they said hey delete the tweet don't let anybody know you said that we got to finish out our playoffs sure maybe they kicked him from the team or tried to sell him after the season was over but the fact of the matter is they had a player on their team who was boosting last season and they didn't terminate him there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this little piece of the article done by Nicole Carpenter on .esports. She said this, Jack, the owner of Cloud9 and Lund Spitfire, and also Huck, the general manager of Boston Uprising, both signed a document that transfers Funny Astro from Lund Spitfire to Boston Uprising. Later, a contract between Funny Astro and Boston Uprising, signed by the player and Huck, and a player agent was issued. Though the transfer document and contract were signed by both teams, an Overwatch League spokesperson told .esports that Funny Astro's contract was not approved by the league. 
So it seems like the Overwatch League responded to this whole situation, and it's kind of odd. They're saying that the Overwatch League never finished the approval process. So I've talked about this before on my channel. Every single player that gets signed to the Overwatch League gets sent over to Blizzard, and Blizzard does an investigation to make sure that they are fit to join the league. It happened to DeFran, it happened to every single other player. But it seems like they never finished this process, and Boston Uprising terminated the contract before the league did finish it. And I think that puts this in a weird spot and maybe gives a chance for Boston Uprising to not pay this fee to London Spitfire, which I kind of believe is still a little unfair to London. And then down below it also said this, Boston Uprising initially declined to pay for Funny Astro's transfer fee to London Spitfire after signing the contract. The contract dispute is ongoing between lawyers at both organizations, a source told Dot Esports. So it seems like London Spitfire and Boston Uprising are really battling it out right now when it comes to the legal field. So this is definitely a crazy situation. And the funny thing about it, they're even taking it to Twitter and beefing there, guys. Let's go Go ahead and take a look at some tweets. This was tweeted out by Huck a few days ago. Toronto over Boston. Also got a player announcement later. I know everyone thought we picked up Funny Astro, but LMAO. And then a picture of Toronto. And then Jack, the owner of Cloud9 and Spitfire, responded and he said, yikes. So, <laughs> you know this is a bad look on Huck. Like, seriously, dude. You're, ugh, he's just rubbing it in the face of London Spitfire and Funny Astro. I get it, the guy boosted, but you don't gotta do this. It's also like he's kind of rubbing it in my face, too, because I was the one to leak Funny Astro. I don't know, man. Huck seems to be salty about a lot of things. I think you should just pay your fee, man. I'm sorry that you signed a guy that got caught boosting. It sucks, but pay your fee. Get off your high horse. That's pretty much it for this topic. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. It's nuts, man. This is a crazy situation, but we do have to move on and we got to talk about other stuff, which one actually does have to do with the Boston Uprising, guys. We have Dream Casper. It seems like he could be back. Another leak coming out saying that Dream Casper is playing on Smurfs and we have some battle tags this time. Let's go ahead and take a look at this image so this was on carter's twitch stream i don't know if many of you guys know who he is he's kind of like a he's a good player but he's a big troll like a massive troll i think he's also been accused of being a, a booster I, I don't know he's known by a lot of like contenders level players like the goats guys so a lot of the players on my team can garner know who carter is even some of them are friends with him but anyways, the guy was streaming and apparently talking about Dream Casper. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any clips of the stream. I went through it, but I can't find anything where he talked about it. But there's this huge thread on the Overwatch TMZ Reddit that links this picture and says, supposedly, these are Dream Casper's Overwatch accounts and battle nets. We have CP Dewey or whatever, however you say it. We have AYZ and then AYEZ and apparently, and Carter also said that players like Zoms and Hydration were added by this account and they added them back to see if it was him and apparently it is him. Now there's no proof of this, but where this seems to be legit comes from this screenshot of ESEA. Now ESEA is a program that you can use on CSGO to play, you know, professional pugs and there's a guy named CPDU. UID and his old alias from April 29th says Dream Casper and now his current alias is CPDUID which is what is the battle tag that has been said to be him by Carter. Now for me this really just 100% confirms it. Dream Casper lives in California. He's 21. April 29th, 2018, that's literally like 2 or 3 weeks after he got exposed, so it would make sense that he wanted to change his name so he's not known. And I can also confirm this 100% guys. I was friends with Dream Casper. I've said this in the past. He was a personal friend of mine and I know for a fact he loved CS:GO. It was the game he played before he came to Overwatch, so it definitely makes sense that he'd be playing CSGO and ESEA Pugs. And you can see on the count, the last time he signed in was June 27th, 2018. So he was definitely logged into the count and playing some ESCA pugs about four months ago, and also four months after the whole entire situation where he got exposed. So it seems like, no, he might not be in jail. He's definitely played at CSGO in the past on ESCA, and it seems like now he's resurfacing on Overwatch under this alias as well. So Dream Casper, 100% back, guys. I believe it completely. I know some of the information is a little confusing. It's all over the place, but it adds up with that last CSGO image. But let's go ahead and move on now and discuss the final topic of the video today. <laughs> and it's quite funny, guys. So Defran, we all know he's kind of been MIA on social media in Overwatch. He recently appeared in Australia. He was there for some family thing. He was playing some ranked. He definitely wasn't streaming. He hasn't uploaded any videos to YouTube. So he's just been MIA for a while. But today, he broke that silence with a video he uploaded to his YouTube channel titled question mark, question mark. And then in the video, he's just absolutely trolling, doing tongue tricks. <laughs> and then he 
finally did eventually explain what's going on and when he'll be back streaming. I'll go ahead and play you guys a clip so you can see. Oh my god. Anyways, uh, I have a quick update. I'm waiting uh, in Perth f for my visa. It just got accepted today. Fucking poke champ. So that's nice. Yeah, that's the update. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take probably six to ten days and then we start the stream again. So a very nice, very nice. Oh, before the video ends, here's some tongue tricks. Holy shit, look at that tongue. Oh my god, it's huge. Alright, whoa, 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 whoa. Family friendly content only, boys. That. What is going on? So, DeFran is going to be back in six to ten days, it seems like. Good for him. I guess it seems like he's in a good and healthy mental state right now. So that's awesome to see. I guess he's getting geared up for the Overwatch League soon. He's going to be in America with Atlanta, getting ready for the season. <laughs> Holy crap, man. That video had me dying. I don't... I don't know what to say anymore, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Have a fabulous night. Uh, I'm out of here, guys. Subscribe for more daily Overwatch League content if you want to stay updated on everything. This is definitely your channel. I'm out of here, guys. Peace.